So I recently finished my last ever set of engineering exams, and over the past four years, I've learned a lot about what it takes to do well on these exams. While I was at uni, I experienced having to sit exams surrounded by hundreds of other students inside lecture theatres and examination halls, and also experienced having to sit major final exams alone in my bedroom during lockdowns. And as some of you might be aware, I managed to graduate with quite high grades regardless of these circumstances. So in this video, I'm gonna share how I managed my studying throughout the semester, how I would juggle my revision for different classes around exams, and the full learning process I would go through to get prepared for my exams. There's lots to get through, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna go over is how I managed my studying throughout the semester. And basically, depending on where we were in the semester, I would go into one of two different modes. Mode one is understanding. And here it's all about wrapping my head around the concepts, completing the tutorial questions, and making sure I have clear notes to refer back to when revising. And mode two is consolidating. And here the focus is on repeating tutorial questions, strategically practicing likely exam questions, and memorizing any of the key theories that I think are important to remember. Now, most of the time I'd just be in mode one because each week we'd be covering a new chunk of content and I'd just be doing my best to follow along and keep up with the pace of the professor's schedule. But as I'm sure many of you are aware, engineering isn't as simple as just studying and then sitting a final exam. We also have several quizzes and assignments to attend to, as well as sitting midterms and final exams. And seeing as a lot of this assessment is scattered throughout the semester, there were definitely times where I needed to switch into mode two, other than just before exams. And how I knew when to do this was through something I always created at the beginning of each semester, which I like to call a course assessment list. And a course assessment list is basically a list of all the assessment you need to complete for all the individual courses you're taking, put into one chronologically ordered week by week list. To create this list, first I would have a look at my university's academic calendar and write down the dates for each week of the semester. Then, one by one, I would go to each of my course's individual assessment schedule and input into the list I just created the name, waiting, and due date of each assessment item. Now, throughout the semester, I would keep this list as a note on my desktop and refer back to it each week as sort of a guiding calendar for how I should be spending my time that week. Okay, and the next thing I want to cover is how I would juggle my revision, specifically around exams. In my experience, there was always at least one or sometimes two courses each semester that were a bit tougher than the others and needed a bit more attention, maybe because they had more content to get through or the content itself was just harder. So I found that sometimes that a 25% split of my time between all four courses wasn't the best thing to do. Now, usually by the time midterms would come around, it was pretty clear which courses these were and I would allocate more time to preparing for these exams. Although what is common between my preparation for all my exams is that I would use space repetition to remember as many things as possible. If you haven't heard what space repetition is, it's basically an evidence-based study technique which helps you to remember things you've already learned by repeating them again at regular intervals. Let me quickly explain. So on this graph, we have retention on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. And what researchers have found is that if we repeat something at spaced intervals, the forgetting curve eventually flattens out. So what this means is that the amount of information we retain in the long run increases each time we repeat something again and again over time. The way I would incorporate this technique into my revision schedule is through studying a minimum of two courses a day for the two weeks leading up into my exam. So for example, if I had an exam schedule that looked like this with four exams in a row, my revision time table would look something like this where I have split my days into two study sessions. By planning a time out like this, you get in a lot more repetitions and if you're gonna spend that time studying anyway, according to science, you've used that time a lot more effectively. For example, let's have a look at these two study schedules. The one on the left has used spaced repetition, and the one on the right has spent full days studying one course. If we add up the hours spent, we can see that it's exactly the same, but if we add up the amount of repetitions, we can obviously see that you get in a lot more by doing smaller and more frequent study sessions. And what you'll also notice here is that if courses A and B were those courses that you've identified as being the extra hard ones, they would be getting in an extra repetition than the rest. Okay, now let's get into how I'd go about revising the actual content. And basically I would go back to week one and repeat this same process for each week of the semester. First, I would read back through the lecture slides and refresh myself on the concepts and formulas. Then I would solve the tutorial problems again, 
And finally, I would make a super solution for each question in the tutorial. Now, a super solution is where every bit of your working out is explained in a lot of detail. And the purpose of this step is to remove any of the hassle at all that would come with solving this question again. So here you need to include any of the information that you could possibly need to understand this question again in the future. A few of the things that I would include in this solution would be any of the formulas I've used, a full definition of the variables in each formula, any of the tables or graphs I've taken values from during the question, and lastly, any definitions or diagrams that may help with my understanding. All right, so the next thing I want to share is how to use past exam papers effectively. Now, one thing I definitely began to notice more during the later years of my degree was how common it was for professors to recycle exam questions and also how similar the practice exam could be to the real thing. And what I found is that you can really take advantage of this when preparing for your exams by focusing in on the questions that are more likely to show up on the exam. So what you need to do here is one, complete all the past exam papers you have available. Two, compare past exam papers and pick out similar questions that repeat themselves. And three, practice as many variations of those repeated questions as you can find. Some of the quick and easy places you should be able to find variations would be in your lecture slides, your tutorial question sheets, or in the textbook if one's available. My theory here is that if you can practice a bunch of different variations of the most likely questions to pop up on the exam, you should be well prepared when a slightly different one does pop up and be able to handle it. All right, so there you have it. That was some of my best tips and tricks when it comes to preparing for university engineering exams. Also, if you're interested in learning about how I ranked first in some of my engineering classes, then you should check out this video I made here where I talk about things like the engineering cycle and what you should be doing throughout the semester if you wanna maximize your grades. And if you want to find out why I think all engineering students should be taking digital notes, then you should check out this other video I made here. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.